as a horror maven who long ago made peace, for better and worse. With the genre's inherent sadism, I'm baffled by how far this new stuff goes, and by why America seems so nuts these days about torture. This is a direct quote from New York Magazine in 2006, in which author David Edelstein first coins the phrase, torture porn. It's a term that would go on to be maligned and lampooned in the horror genre, and still has not been entirely embraced in hindsight, which is crazy for the horror genre. Almost every horror trend is eventually accepted and embraced by the community, and you need to look no further than schlocky 80 slashers for proof of that. Disparaged as exploitative and cruel, tastemakers thumb their nose at seemingly everything that came down the pipeline around this time. So it begs the question, was the genre as a whole as bad as people made it seem? In this video, I aim to look at the genre as a whole, and really try and pick apart what it is about torture porn, porn. that everybody hates, and hopefully explain to you why I think it should be more accepted, and possibly even offer some evidence that it's starting to be accepted. So with all that on the table, let's start with what is arguably the face of the entire genre, Saw. The funny thing is, the original Saw shares virtually none of the tropes that would later define the genre. In fact, the original is much closer to a thriller like Seven than it is to Hostel, it wasn't until the sequels that Saw started to steer into its reputation. And even that was only in response to what the audience wanted. People were enamored with the traps in the first Saw, and understandably wanted to see more. As plot became harder to come by, it makes sense that more runtime was filled with these visceral traps. And why is that a bad thing? People loved the chase sequences in a Friday 13th film. They loved the nightmare sequences in a Nightmare on Elm Street film. I'd say the first to really embrace this in the series was probably Saw 3. Don't get me wrong, Saw 2 was definitely headed in that direction, but the core of that movie is still a thriller. 3 is all-out exploitation, and I love it. It plays into deep, common fears we all have, and is unafraid to twist the knife. As a franchise, Saw is pretty solid. I think the last movie in its original run and both of its spin-offs are pretty bad, but I actually enjoyed the convoluted soapy elements of the overarching narrative, and the brutality of those movies is truly jarring. Not only that, but they created a deep lore and a nearly unmatchable environment. You know a Saw movie when you see it. To try and lessen that by referring to it as torture porn, I feel like really ignores a lot of what makes this genre so fun. Part of which I think is its diversity in storytelling. While sure, each of these movies will feature lengthy, unflinching looks at some kind of torture or other human suffering, think of how different the tone is between something like Saw and Turistas. These movies allowed for a variety of stories to be told while still featuring the visceral elements that define them. One such story I've always felt was overlooked is that of the Hostel series. The idea of an ultra-secretive organization of wealthy murderers paying to torture and kill unfortunate tourists? That's almost as scary as it sounds realistic. I wish Hostel would have had a few more movies to flesh out that backstory a little bit, but instead we got the direct-to-video disaster that was Hostel 3, which I'm sure I'll do a video on at some point. Hostel is a great example of people being so taken aback by the brutal elements of a movie, they really miss out on the other elements that make it what it is. I think Eli Roth is a genius, and a mastermind in the horror genre, and the Hostel movies are some of his best work. Like I said before, I think in the future, we're gonna see a lot of revisionist historians claiming these movies to be classics, reappraising movies they once wrote off as exploitative schlock, and I think Wolf Creek is a fantastic example of that. Released in 2005, the same year as Hostel and Saw 2, Wolf Creek was initially torn apart by critics and fans alike. That's why it's been a pleasant surprise to me to see the discourse of this movie, particularly online, has completely flipped. It seems like the horror community has really started to embrace it, and good, it deserves it. It's a really good movie. And as far as Wolf Creek is concerned, the reappraisal doesn't stop there. Three different publications have revisited their Wolf Creek review since the start of 2020, and all three came away feeling much more favorable about it, praising in particular its emphasis on character development. And in a stunning full circle moment for the genre, the man that coined the term torture porn in that 2006 article, David Edelstein, listed Wolf Creek as one of the top 25 horror movies made in the last 50 years. I remember how Saw was the butt of seemingly every joke in its heyday, and how even diehard horror fans seemed to reject it as brainless trash. That's not the case anymore. I often see it mentioned with the greats, the Halloweens and the Friday the 13ths, etc. And good, it absolutely should be. I personally hope to see the sentiment towards these movies continue to move in the direction they have been. And I hope one day they'll be completely embraced by the horror community, as they always should have been. However, 2009 came, and so did Paranormal Activity. While Paranormal Activity was only one of several movies to influence this shift, I personally see it as the final nail in the coffin Coin. of torture. 
as supernatural stories as well as found footage horror soon became in vogue, and I hated it. I know we need new horror fans for the horror genre to grow, and to do so, we need accessible horror movements like this one. But we also need the balance that these ultra-violent horror movies provide. So I'd go as far as to say, not only does Corn. the torture porn subgenre not deserve the hate that it's got, but the genre as a whole sorely needed it. Thanks for watching this video. Happy Halloween. Wow, dude. <laughs> I wanted to commit to putting out a ton of content in October. And here we are. This is the last of a, a whopping, I believe, 13 this month. But I'm also looking forward to a couple of non-horror projects I have coming up. I'm going to do a South Park video and my first ever Rick and Morty video. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed in the last month. It's been my biggest month of growth since I've had the channel. And yeah, I hope it can keep growing. Until next time, stay safe. Sometimes I swear I can see right through you You left my world